This is the Dell Inspiron 7610. Uh, I, along with many others, have experienced issues with the touchpad on this laptop behaving erratically at times. And there is a Dell community forum discussing this issue. It seems to be uh, plaguing many of these laptops. Uh, the post ID for that uh, community forum post is 8053835, in case you're looking for it. And this has been an issue we've been trying to find a solution for for quite a while. Um, in the post, we've identified that the issue is likely caused by the touchpad having a bad grounding connection. And recently, many have reported success with a fix that a user by the name of Jack Niss came up with. Um, just recently, he provided a very helpful post uh, breaking down detailed steps of the process. And uh, I figured uh, as I performed the fix on my own laptop this morning, I'd record the process for any who are interested and uh, we'll see how it goes. So starting here, uh, the first step that Jack mentioned uh, is a good starting point is to boot the laptop or rather to put the laptop into service mode. Uh, to do this, you hold down the B key and then push the power on and just keep holding it until it comes up with the display uh, about going into service mode. So it comes up with this screen right here, and then you push any key and just walk through the prompts. It'll give a few uh, beeps and then it will shut down and go into service mode. And this essentially makes it safer, I believe, to open up and perform work on the laptop uh, with the battery still connected so you don't have to disconnect the battery. The first step is to remove the screws on the back of the uh, panel so it can be removed. I've, re I've already removed uh, most of the screws. Um, if you're using a kit like I have for the screwdriver, uh, make sure that you get the right size of Phillips head. I found that for these back screws for the kit that I have, a 2.0 Phillips head is what is needed. That's what fits these panel screws the best. So I took out the other uh, one, two, three, four, five, six screws and just these two on the back are holding, uh, are the only two remaining screws. And those screws do not come out of the panel. They stay attached to the panel. When you back them out, if you noticed a second ago, there's a little gap on the sides. It'll pull the panel up a little bit. And once you get that pulled up a little bit on the back, you can kind of work your way around what I'm doing with my hands. Uh, if you want to, you could use a small pry tool, but just be very caref careful not to damage that back panel. It takes quite a bit of prying, and eventually that panel will just pop right off. Nothing's connected to it, so it'll come straight off. Next part is to remove the battery. Um, honestly, getting that panel up is the most difficult part. <laughs> but uh, the battery just takes a few um, other screws. I believe with this one I used a little bit uh, bigger head Phillips. So again, just make sure that you're using the right size head. I believe this is a 2.5 Phillips in my kit that I was using. Once you've removed the five screws, the battery will just lift straight out. It has a cable attached to it, and you can just fold the battery back. You don't even have to disconnect it. Just fold it back and make sure you don't tug on that cable. And once the battery is removed, then the trackpad is clearly in view. It's this 
uh, it's underneath this silver panel. You can notice that there are two different copper contact pads that can act as a grounding source for the track pad. I believe there are little uh, silver uh, tabs that are in, supposed to ground uh, through a, a, through another possibly conductive pad. I haven't tested it, but it sounds like some people have tested the connection with those two um, tabs and it's not a very good connection. So this whole process is trying to create an additional connection that's better. The copper has a little bit of a coating to it, so you have to sand down a little bit in order to ensure a good connection and ensure a good solder connection. Here I used 600 grit sandpaper to wear down that top coat so you can see that there's a visible difference between what's sanded and what's not. I used a damp paper towel to remove any shavings and later I used a paper towel with uh, with, with uh, rubbing alcohol to get it cleaner. As far as the wire goes, you can use pretty much any type of wire. I'm using a solid copper wire in this case that's uh, not covered. Everything in this area can be um, exposed. If, if you wanted to, you could use a shielded cable, you could use a stranded cable. Um, it doesn't really matter. So I just cut off a piece. Here I believe this is another 2.5 Phillips screw. This is holding down the grounding panel and we're just going to remove that so that we can stick our grounding cable underneath it, our grounding wire. Right now I'm just forming a loop in the wire so it'll wrap around the screw nicely. Again, all of that aluminum, it's meant to contact that um, copper grounding pad. So we're just trying to make a good connection between that aluminum and the copper. Some people have uh, said that perhaps bending down those pins a little bit more aggressively might help ensure a better connection, uh, but this is probably um, so, uh, soldering it's probably the most robust connection we're going to get. So just stick the wire underneath that screw, get it nice and snug. And now I'm just, I intentionally cut the wire a little bit long to start with. Now I'm just getting it to the right size that I want. And the next step is just to solder it down. If I were to do this process again, I would be very uh, cautious of not keeping the soldering iron down for too long. And at the end, I'll show you there's a little bit of a bulge on the track pad. So I think that whole area in there is rather thin. So just be very cautious about uh, any excess heat that might be going there. So again, just use a little bit of rubbing alcohol, get those connections nice and clean. And if you don't have a soldering iron or wouldn't feel comfortable doing this process, there's, like, there's likely other ways that you could try to form a connection. We're just trying to, again, we're just trying to get a good connection between that copper 
and um, whether that be alumina, uh, aluminum or, or stainless steel, we're just trying to get a good connection between those two contacts. So any way that we can do that will be good. So that's pretty much it as far as the uh, as far as the fix and I'll show you here I'll pull the camera in and just show you what we're looking at as far as the connection goes so again just be cautious of keeping heat on that area so now we're just putting it back together putting the battery back in place putting the screws back in as I mentioned, the panels, the most difficult part, those two screws in the back of the panel, they remain there. And the first step is to get those screws seated. So get your screwdriver, back them out, and then try screwing them in. Make sure they're in place. And as you screw those down, it'll start pulling the back end of the panel in. And then I just work my way around the edges. There are a few clips in the middle of the panel as well. Clips along the back. And I sped up this process, but it took me a long time. And I've taken the panel off of this once before. And uh, over the, the next couple weeks, I would notice areas where the clips had not been pushed in yet. So there are quite a few different areas. Just look around the edge, make sure everything's pushed in. You honestly don't even really need the, the other screws because the clips hold it in so well. And then just put in the other screws for the panel. Again, these were 2.0 Phillips. And since we started up the laptop in service mode, in order to boot the laptop back up again, we have to plug it in it won't boot from the battery straight. We have to plug it in so that it knows to exit out of service mode. And then there you go. Laptop will boot up and the issue should be fixed. Here at the end, I'm just including an image of that little bump that I noticed on the trackpad after performing this process. Now, the trackpad works fine. The bump's barely noticeable. Uh, I don't know if this was caused by the heat of soldering or by pushing on the laptop in some way, but just use caution. You should be fine. So, hope this helps.